Assalamu alaikum. My name is Adil Ahmed and I'm here to talk about the impact of COVID on our whole economy and COVID, uh, the impact of COVID on NBPP. So first of all, the whole economy. We've noticed that foreign debt investment, uh, that is accumulated over the two years, has fundament has phenomenally fallen uh, in the recent uh, months. So I think we accumulated around four billion dollars in T bills over the two years that we had from 2018 to 2020. And now we're seeing reductions of uh, around two to three billions because investors are more secure with cash in hand as opposed to cash in T-bills during the COVID pandemic. Another impact is that our exports are stagnant at the moment since all orders have been deferred to a later date or on all, all payments have been deferred to a later date as well. Another issue is that non-essential businesses have been closed down. So our economy has less uh, production of goods and services at the moment. And our only saving grace is that oil prices fell and that imports are also reducing because of the lockdown. So that's, so that's the only thing that we're holding on by. Um, what I expect is the pandemic, the effect of the pandemic will hit, I think, in the third and fourth quarter of 2020 and will extend to 2021. I mean, unemployment is bound to increase because firms are operating at a lesser capacity and remittances are bound to fall because people are coming back to Pakistan because of the pandemic. So as a whole, uh, it's a very bleak outlook on the economy at the moment. Uh, moving on to NBP. So NBP is one of the largest asset banks, uh, one of the largest asset um, portfolios uh, in Pakistan. I think out of around one trillion are in advances, which are majorly held by corporates. So with what the bank is expecting is around a majority of these advances to be deferred to a later date. So that means that while they might get interest payments, they won't be getting the principal amounts which basically reduces their um, credit capacity generation, uh, credit generation capacity. Because if loans, uh, principal amounts aren't coming in, then they can't give loans out because they have, they have lesser and lesser money. So that's one impact that NBP might have to go through. Another thing is that SDP has recently announced uh, reductions in your discount rates. So they went from 13.25 to 12.5 to 11, 10, 9, and now I think they're at 8%. Now the, the reason why this is uh, this why this would have an inverse impact is your NIM fall, so net interest margins, so your net uh, your interest revenue minus interest expenses. Since discount rates are falling, your interest revenue is bound to decrease, and since the credit appetite of the whole country has uh, reduced uh, as an overall, because no one wants loans at the moment. So since your credit appetite reduces, your income interest income again falls. So your NIM for the banks, the net interest uh, margins are bound to fall. Another, another impact that NBP might have to face is non the increase of non-performance loans. So since in unemployment is bound to increase, so uh, are non-performance loans since people need to borrow to survive. So that will be another pressure on the profitability of NBPP, NBP. Uh, another, another impact is um, the increase in non-budgeted expenses. So as I was researching the financial reports, I came across the fact that operating expenses increased in 2018 about 15% and in 2019 by 18% when in the past years they were increasing by 1, 12% and 1%, 12% and 3%. So that was the fundamental increase in operating expenses and this is bound to increase again because you have to account for uh, sanitizers, masks, face masks uh, and so on. So your budgeted, unbudgeted uh, expenses are bound to increase as well. Another impact that I see is your um, unplanned organization shutdowns because either there's a COVID outbreak in your bank and it needs to close down for three days for sanitization and employees need to go on a 14 day quarantine. So your branches stop working and the work, uh, work comes to a halt. So that's another big disadvantage that MEV might have to face. So you might ask what is MVP doing uh, to kind of combat all of this? And what they're doing is they're pushing demand to go through, through online channels. They want to focus on non-banking, cha non-branch channels such as ATM, debit cards, credit cards, online banking, and so on, so that uh, their branches don't get overrun by people, and that so that they can kind of branch out to a new channel which is online. Thank you.